In this video, we proceed with our narration of William Walker Atkinson's practical mental influence and mental fascination. This will be chapter six, Fascination. The previous video, being the previous chapter, was chapter five, Mental Imaging, where we covered what occultists call a mental image, what they use it for and how they use it, and the mental magic of lantern. And we ended with, you will see in the succeeding chapters the important part that mental imaging plays in the different phases of mental influence. Even when we do not refer directly to it by name, you will see that the idea sought to be conveyed by one mind to another. The feeling, the desire, or mental state sought to be transferred from one mind to others must and does depend very materially for strength upon the clearness and the completeness of the mental image held in the mind of the person seeking to do the influencing. The project of the mental image of his mental magic lantern upon the screen of the minds of others. Carry this principle well in mind that you may see its operation in its different forms. Now, before continuing with chapter six, mental fascination, which covers mental fascination, personal magnetism, charming, irresistible influence, alluring qualities of the mind, instances of great men, the secret of fascination, examples, explanations, and instructions, and a valuable information, a valuable bit of information, excuse me, let's take a moment. I will suggest to you that if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, the Ranki Ramacharaka, that you pause the video right now and go ahead and do it, and while you're doing it, also activate the notification bell feature. If you like the video by the time it's over, please remember to give it a thumb up. Comment courteously and share the joy of the channel with others. And now let's go. Chapter 6, Fascination. In this and in the next chapter, we shall present to you information regarding the effect of mental influence manifested when there is personal contact between the persons using the power and the person effect. Then we shall pass on to a consideration of the effect produced when the persons are not in direct contact with one another. There are two general forms of the direct use of mental influence, which, although somewhat resembling each other, may still be separated into two classes. The first we shall call fascination, and the second, hypnotism. By fascination, we mean the manifestation of mental influence when the two persons are together, without passes or the usual hypnotic methods, such as passes. By hypnotism, we mean the uses of the power, also when the two parties are together, but accompanied by passes or hypnotic methods. Under the head of fascination are to be found the manifestations generally known as personal magnetism, charming, etc. It is quite commonly employed in varying degrees by many persons, often without their conscious knowledge of the principles employed. Many persons are possessed of the power of fascination naturally and without having studied or practiced the principles. Many others, not originally possessing the power, have acquired it by study and practice of the power to influence people in this way. For it must be known the power may be acquired by study and practice just as may any other power of mind and body. To some it is easy, to others difficult, but all may acquire a very de great degree of power by intelligent study and practice of the underlying principles. Fascination is one of the oldest forms of manifestations of mental influence. It was known to and employed by the earliest races of men. It is even found among the lower animals who pursue their prey or capture their mates by its use. 
a recent writer on the subject has defined the word used in this connection as, quote, acting upon by some powerful or irresistible influence, influencing by an irresistible charm, alluring, exciting, irresistibly, or powerfully, charming, captivating, or attracting powerfully, influencing the imagination, reason, or will of another in an uncontrollable manner, enchanting, captivating, or alluring, powerfully, or irresistibly. Now, as we have just said, this power is observable even among the lower animals in some cases. Instances are related by naturalists in which scorpions have fascinated other insects, causing them to circle around and around until finally the insect would plunge down right within striking distance of the scorpion, which would then devour its prey. Birds of prey unquestionably fascinate their game, and men who have been brought into contact with wild tigers and lions, etc., have testified that they felt paralyzed in some manner, their legs refusing to obey their will, and their minds seeming to become numbed and stunned. Those who have seen a mouse in the presence of a cat will testify to the effect of some power exerted by the latter. Birds in the presence of cats and serpents also manifest symptoms of, of a conquered will. And naturalists cite in instances of the employment by, of this force, excuse me, by birds seeking to captivate and charm their mates at the beginning of the season. Among men, is it, it's been noticed that certain individuals possess this power to a great degree. Some of the great men of ancient and modern times, having been so filled with the power that they could manage their followers all, almost as one would move automatons. Julius Caesar had this power developed to a great degree and used it from youth to his last days. He was worshipped almost as a god by his soldiers. He would undertake almost any task at his bidding. Napoleon also possessed this charm to a wonderful degree. It enabled him to control men with whom he came in contact and to bend them to his will. He rose from a poor student to the dignity and power of the Emperor of France. When banished to Elba, he escaped, and landing in France, he, alone and unarmed, confronted the ranks of the French army, drawn up to capture him, and walking toward the soldiers, compelled the latter to throw down their guns and flock to his support. He entered Paris at the head of the great army, which had been sent forth to capture him. This is no wild legend, but a sober fact of history. And in our own times, we see how certain leaders of men sweep before before them and move them, sweep people before them, excuse me, and move them around like pawns on a chessboard of life. All of the above mentioned phenomena here come under the head of fascination. And as a result of the emanation of streams of active thought waves from the mind of a person, that same being strongly concentrated and directed toward those whom the person wishes to affect. The person forms a strong thought in his mind and sends it out to the other, charged with the force of a concentrated will, so that the other person feels it most strongly and forcibly. The fundamental idea is the forming of the thought and then sending it out to the other person. For instance, if you wish a person to like you, you should form in your mind this thought, that person likes me, fixing it in your own mind as a fact. Then project to him the concentrated thought, you like me, you like me very much, with an air of assurance and confidence. And the other person is bound to feel the effect unless he or she has acquired a knowledge of the subject and is using self-protection. The thought should be sent forth with the strength 
that usually accompanies a strongly spoken statement. But you must not actually speak the words aloud. You should merely say them strongly in your mind. If you wish to produce an effect or impression strength, or, or impression strength upon another person, well, then the same process may be used. Charging the thought and vibrations to that idea that you have a stronger will than the other person and are able to overcome his will using the silent message, I'm stronger than you. My will overcomes yours, etc. The successful agents and the salesmen use the following method in reaching their customers. They form a thought that the other person desires their goods very much. And then they send out the thought wave that you desire my goods. You want them very much. You have an irresistible longing for them, etc. Others use the following when they wish another to comply with their wishes. You will do as I say. You will do as I say. You will yield to me fully and completely, etc. You will readily see from these above examples that the whole principle employed in any or all of these, any and all of these cases, consists of number one, the thought of what the person wishes the other to do, held firmly in the mind, and number two, the projection of that thought to the other, silently, in the shape of unspoken words. In the above, you have the whole secret of fascination condensed into one small space here. You will understand, of course, that the words are only means of concentrating and vitalizing the thought. Again, the words are only means of concentrating and vitalizing the thought. Animals merely feel desires, but are able to fascinate by the strength of them, although they cannot use words. And one person may fascinate another understand, without understanding a word of his language. The real strength coming from the strength of the desire behind the words. The formation of the desire thought into words is merely for the purpose of concentrating and focusing the thought. For words are concentrated symbols of ideas, thoughts, or feelings. The exact process of sending forth the thought wave to the other. Now that's difficult to describe. You know how you feel when you say something very forcible and em emphatic to another person. You can fairly feel the force of the words being hurled at the other person. Well, cultivate that same power in sending forth the unspoken word in the above manner, and you will soon be able to notice the effect of the thought on the other. It may help you to imagine that you can see the force flying from you to the other. The imagination properly used helps very much in these matters where it creates a mental path over which the force may travel. You must not act awkwardly when sending out the thought waves, but converse, but converse in an ordinary manner, sending your thought waves between your speeches when the other person is talking to you or at any pause in the conversation. It is always well to send a, first a powerful thought wave before the conversation is opened. Before. Preferably while you are approaching the person. And it is likewise well to terminate the interview with a parting shot of considerable strength. You will find that these thought waves are, are of far greater power than the spoken words. And then again, you can, in this way, send out impressions that you could not utter in spoken words for obvious reasons. Now, do you see 
how you have been affected by persons who have influenced you at times in your past life. Now that you know the secret, you will be, in a, in a measure, immune from further impressions from others. And when you read our concluding chapter here entitled Self-Protection, you will be able to surround yourself with a protective armor through which the thought waves cannot penetrate, but which will turn aside the shafts directed towards you. Now, chapter 7 will be hypnotic influence, and we'll begin with, as we have mentioned in the preceding lesson, there is a general resemblance between the manifestation of mental influence, known as fascination, and that known as hypnotic influence. In the manifestation known as fascination, the influence is exerted solely by thought waves passing from one mind to another without a physical medium or channel other than the ether. In hypnotic influence, on the contrary, the influence is heightened by means of passive strokings or eye influence. But that is for the next chapter. Again, thank you for selecting this video. In chapter 5, Fascination of William Walker Atkinson's Practical Mental Influence and Mental Fascination. Again, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please, please right after this, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell feature while you're at it. And before you even end, you know, click away from this video, give it a thumb up if you liked it. And go ahead and comment courteously below. Share the joy of the channel with others. I'll see you in the next video.